It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Changemakers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. In today's world, we need the skills to make a lasting impact when we speak. We use our voices to express ourselves and to achieve our goals. Joining us today is Denise Woods, one of the nation's most sought after vocal coaches. Denise provides valuable lessons and exercises that all of us can use to overcome common voice and speech problems and to become confident, effective communicators. Denise has been the voice behind the voice for the last 20 years. She has trained executives for public speaking at major corporations, coached Hollywood actors and broadcast news anchors, and has prepared NBA and NFL athletes for on-camera commentary. She is the author of the book, The Power of Voice. Welcome, Denise. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Denise, I want to begin by talking a little bit about you. The list of people with whom you have worked is is really quite impressive. So (laughs) how did you get started as a vocal coach? I started in the early 90s. Juilliard, which is my alum, which which I am alumna uh, of, uh, called me to join the faculty. And it was in 1992, and I was the first African-American woman on the drama division faculty, which I'm so proud of. They called me, and uh, I thought they wanted me to come and teach acting. They wanted me to join the voice and speech faculty. And I really have to say I was an amazing voice and speech student because I was previously an opera singer. So I could hear sounds of speech as if they were musical notes. So for them to come and ask me to join the faculty, it really sort of resonated with me, and I was proud to do it. And then when I joined faculty, I kept getting calls from Broadway shows to come and coach the actors because they couldn't be heard in the theater, or their articulation wasn't as crisp as it should have been, or it it could have even have been a dialect that they needed. And then I got one call from someone in Hollywood to coach an actor who needed a very specific dialect, and it was the rage. And then people started calling. I was still in New York at the time on faculty at Juilliard, and I kept getting calls from people in Hollywood that would say, oh, this dialect is very specific. Can you do it? And I say yes. And this was before Skype. This was even before email. We didn't even have email back then. And um, it was just it was just sending in tapes. I had uh, literally cassette tapes that I was sending back and forth to clients. And so one client just led to another and to another. And then in 2000, the head of the uh, School of Theater at California Institute of the Arts invited me to come out and join their faculty and head the speech department there. And I thought, I think this is a good time to go because my 12-year-old son was in middle school and I knew I had a window of time that I could break away and take him to another environment uh, without it disrupting his life completely. And so I took the leap and my first job in Hollywood as a dialect coach was working with Will Smith in the film Ali and the rest is history and one thing just led to another and to another and uh, it it just it's panned out to be an extraordinary you know it's interesting because I use my voice to make a living but I don't think the average person really pays much attention to the way he or she speaks it and when I was preparing for this conversation (laughs) I kept thinking, oh boy, she's going to hear my jersey, and she's going to just laugh. I knew that's what you were going to (laughs) say. But do you believe that, Denise? Do you think that we really don't pay enough attention to the way we speak? Well, you know, I think when we hear ourselves, uh, you know everybody when they hear themselves on on a voicemail or something recorded, they go, oh my gosh, that sounds like, I, I don't sound like that. And I was t- 
telling someone the other day because they were asking, how come people are so shocked by the way they sound when they hear themselves played back? And I said, it's the same thing. When we look at ourselves in the mirror, we go, oh, my God, I didn't realize I'd gained those 10 pounds, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so we have this perception of how we sound, and then when we hear it, we go, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize that I have um, a, a, a dialect or, you know, that I have a, a slight, you know, hissy S, sibilant S. I, I didn't realize those things. And then the only way it becomes a real matter of concern is when you have to use your voice for a living. If it's every day people go, eh, well, so be it. But you have no idea when in your life you're going to be called upon to make that speech. Um, to, I, I have a, a wonderful client who goes to her class reunion, and it's a, it's a pretty big deal. Um, it was a private all-girls school, and they all have, these women have become these amazing individuals all over the world. And um, she was asked to be the keynote speaker, and she was floored. She's an engineer, and she never had to use her voice outside of maybe an occasional presentation, but she had to use her voice there. And she really didn't realize the power that she had in, in her breath and, and the ability to be poised and the ability to articulate, and more importantly, the ability to captivate an audience. She had no idea. And so when it, it, it's put on your radar, uh, um, then you say, oh, I think I need to address this. But I think that it's probably on everybody's radar right now because, because of the climate that we're in, it, be it socially, politically, um, medically, what we're going through, you know, just being an advocate. Uh, I know my mom, the early stages of, 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 um, of this pandemic, my mom lived in a beautiful assisted living in seven minutes from where I live, and uh, they did not want to mask up. And there was no ordinance, they said, for masking. And I said, but why do you need an ordinance? Common sense tells you that if you cover, and if, if you cover, you know, you're not spreading the droplets. And so I went, <laughs> I went all the way to City Hall. I became an advocate for the people in my mother's assisted living. This was in March, the end of March, beginning of April. And I got the, the I was instrumental in getting the ordinance passed that said that they must wear PPE in, in, in these kinds of facilities. Um, so, so it doesn't even have to be a platform where you're changing the world. I changed my mother's world, mm -hmm. and I really mm -hmm. contend that I, I really feel I could have potentially saved some lives. So it's that kind of thing that makes you think, I can use my voice. And the more you use it, the more you desire to use it, the better you become. So just sticking with the mask concept for a moment, when we have that mask on, you know, we may tend to feel silenced. Is there a tip that you can offer our listeners to help us project and speak clearly so that we're understood while wearing a mask? Absolutely. Your voice is an instrument, and now more than ever you have to think of it as such. A lot of times we don't think of our voices as an instrument or as this independent thing from us because we have we have physical gestures we've got eyes that people can look into they can see our lips so therefore even if we're not articulating they can look at our mouths and see what we're saying just the visual and now that the visual is taken away now that we're masked and I wear dark glasses um, because I'm very sensitive to light because I have light eyes and so I, I have dark glasses on and usually I have a cap or a hat and, um, uh, and, and dark glasses and a mask so no one can see my face. So it is all about the voice. And what I do, Joan, is I make it, I find the musicality in, in, in vocal variety, in my ability to really lean into certain consonant sounds. And so not that it's arbitrary or it feels, it feels um, contrived in any way, but I find a real need for speech, a real need to communicate this idea, even if it's just in the grocery store. And I work on it every day. 
Every day I go out, I work on my goal is to impact somebody, to make an impact in someone's life. Even if it's just, I like how your hair looks today. I like those sunglasses you have on. But if it's, you know, in the, the vitriolic kind of uh, uh, society that we've, we've now come to, you kind of want to shed some light in somebody's life on, at any given moment because I believe in the law of reciprocity. If you put it out, it comes back to you. And so if we put it out there and we're masked, we've got to be able to articulate it in a very specific way, in a very conscious way, so that speech becomes conscious, a conscious choice to make these sounds, to use your voice, to use the upper portion of your voice and the lower portion of your voice and everything in between. I think one of the things that we forget today, we're so caught up in everything being digital, you know, texting and emailing and social media posts that we forget the power that we have with our voice. And we forget that people make judgments about us from the way we speak, whether it be our grammar or if we're, you know, we sound timid or if we sound forceful, we have the power to really portray to another what we want and how we we want to achieve it. Completely. I wish, I wish this was visual because the whole time you were speaking just now, my, not just my head is, is nodding, my whole body is nodding in agreement because we have to form the narrative. We should not let anyone dictate who we are or how we should sound or how we should identify. That's the bottom line, is how do I identify? I might look one way, I might sound a particular way, but how I identify, how I identify is what I want to put into the world. And I will be darned if anyone is going to take that away from me. It's empowering. It is so empowering to put your spirit into the world uh, vocally so that if, in fact, I want to speak a particular way, um, and we call it we call it code switching in African-American culture because everybody code switch. Everybody code switches. We go from one sound to another sound and from this sound to another sound. And I liken it to, you know, I don't just have one pair of shoes. I don't have one outfit. I wouldn't wear a pair of jeans to a red carpet event. I have several different choices that in my closet to choose from depending on the event. And I think we should have the same amount of, of choices vocally. And we should use them with a sense of command and power. I liken it to um, the, the, the difference between having a box of crayons with eight crayons in it or a box of 64. So you've got five shades of green now as opposed to one single green crayon. And, and, and the thing about this, the reason why I use the, the crayon analogy is because it's still the green crayon. It's still you. You are still your authentic self. It all emanates from your center, from your core. And so therefore, you're just finding different ways of expressing that. A lot of times people feel, oh, if I do this work, then it's really not me. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm this particular person from this particular region. And if I don't sound like that, then people are going to say I'm a sellout, or I'm trying to be something that I'm not. And that is so far from the truth. And that is so far from the work that I do. Because as I said, we have that green crayon. Now I'm giving you five different shades of the green crayon. Denise, what are some of the biggest problems that you've helped people overcome? Trauma. Trauma. That's the biggest one. And that could mean physical abuse. That could mean psychological abuse. But how, tra- or, or, or just a, a, an accident. Um, you know, I, I had a client one time that he came in and his jaw was so tight, like he was speaking through his teeth. And I couldn't, he couldn't open up his mouth. He, he wouldn't open up his mouth. And he explained why, because when I came, I said, have you ever been punched or have you ever been, had, had any type of physical trauma to your jaw? And then he explained to me, and I won't go into it, but um, the, it can be physical trauma, it can be psychological trauma that really shuts us down. That when we shut down physically, 
or emotionally or psychologically, it affects the voice. And so what I do is a series of breathing exercises, relaxation exercises and breathing exercises that gets down to the core, your center. Your breath gets you centered into your being. How many times uh, in, in every culture, um, and particularly in Western cultures, uh, where men are said, or men are told when they're little boys, suck it up, men don't cry, or, you know, are those tears? And that's even with little girls, too. Are those tears? You, you want me to give you something to cry about? And so we are really not nurtured to go deeply in our emotions. I mean, in, in fact, we see it as a liability as opposed to an asset. And the deeper we go emotionally, the deeper we go with our breath. And the deeper we go with our breath, the more connected we are to our source. And then when you breathe deeply like this, you've got a voice that, that really comes from a wonderfully open orifice um, and, and completely unobstructed, and then it releases into the world to your audience in a very expressive way. Denise, when I opened the conversation, I mentioned that you've worked with really quite an impressive list of people. Is there a story that you can share with us that really brings joy to your life? Mm, mm, mm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I worked with Will Smith on Ali, and uh, he, and this was in 2001, and he Everybody knows that he's this gregarious, wonderful human being, uh, but I saw it, and I saw his work ethic. I saw his humanity. I saw his talent, and I contend that it's all three of those. It's, it's a level of humanity. It's a level of, of, of talent and a work ethic. This man stayed in character Ali. He stayed in Ali's voice and his mannerisms the entire time we worked together for three months, 24-7. He embodied this man's essence. And, and so we're in, in, in our session because we work three times a week um, for three months before we started filming. And we're in our session and his assistant called and, um, and he said, oh yeah, yeah, give it, yes, absolutely give it to her. And then he calls his current wife to tell her that he just had his assistant give money for his ex-wife's mother to purchase a car. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. It's his ex-wife's mother. He wanted to buy her a car. And, and he called his current wife to tell her that he was doing that. And it just... It warmed my heart, and, and, it, and I'm getting emotional right now. It's just this wonderful story of, of a person's humanity and the ability to share that as an artist. And that's when, when you see the behind the scenes of these, these stars and when we're seeing this great work, it's because it comes from a beautiful source, a, a person who knows their worth, a person who knows their voice, a person who appreciates their voice and the voices of others. And I'm so happy that you shared that story because I think today in particular, more than ever, I, I think we need to hear more about acts of kindness and that we all have the power mm -hmm. to do similar acts within our own lives. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's what really strengthens your voice. You know, it's giving. It's it's the giving of yourself, the act of giving that empowers you and 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 releases all of the trauma or all of the you know, whatever has been placed on you in life when you give it away, when you release it. And that's what this is. I tell people your voice is a gift. The way Will Smith gifted his ex-mother-in-law was so, and, and, and if he ever hears this, he would go, I, I don't even remember that. It was, it was probably such a part of who he is, but it, it, it left such an indelible impression on me. The same way he did that is what we should do with our voices. Our voices are gifts, 
and I tell clients that I want you to see that blue Tiffany box wrapped in a beautiful white bow that's your voice and when you give somebody a gift for their birthday for christmas we take time to prepare and really find the right gift and it's got and the right card to go along with the gift we it, it's painstaking sometimes what we put into the gift that we give people that we love i say make your voice the very same way Give your voice, extend your voice, release your voice as if it were a gift. The book is The Power of Voice, A Guide to Making Yourself Heard. If you'd like to learn more about Denise and her work, you can visit speakitclearly.com. Denise, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. This is wonderful, Joan. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided is the opinion of our guest and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.